Today we're tasting the barley wine. All right, so we made this a while ago. It was bottled on April 30th, and today is May 23rd. So as you can see, we've been a little bit busy. This has been sitting for almost, well, about three weeks, a little over three weeks. So what do we want to do? We want to pop this sucker open and see if it's fizzed. You ready? It's going to hurt. Oh, we got a pop. Yay! Without it flowing Did over. Did you see the little smoke? I love the little smoke. Little wispies. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, it's nice and dark. That's a good sign. Let's see if I can get some head going here. Pretty decent carbonation, I'm going to say. Let's just seal this back up. Keep that carbonation in there. Like our fancy bottling and labeling. Masking tape for the win. <laughs> okay. So, I'm seeing consistently sized bubbles. That's a good head, and it's retaining its head pretty well. I'm no beer expert, but I'm going to say it's properly carbonated. Now color i can't see through it that means it must be a good beer <laughs> it's pretty much kind of like criteria. how i like my coffee too yeah. if you, you know like if i put a fork or a spoon in this would it stand up straight then i know it's good right <laughs> okay it smells a little hoppy we knew this though yeah because you know i'm dumb i'll admit it give it a smell because he's a blonde yeah yeah yeah, I, I don't do a lot of beers and I always get the hops measurements a little bit wrong, but I'm working on it. It actually smells really nice. It tastes. It smells a little hoppy, but I also get the the deep roasted grains and all that. Yeah, this this is probably going to be really, really good. She's not gonna say. Oh boy. It is more complex and more sweet than I was anticipating. Oh my God, you guys. It's good stuff. A little less hops and this would probably be my favorite beer I've ever made. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, like literally 25% less hop flavor and this would be my favorite. I mean, it's got the roastiness, the chocolatey kind of thing. Yeah. Oh man, this is good. And I'm not making it up, really, guys. If I didn't like it, I'd tell you. No, and we're, as we've said a multitude of times, we really aren't oh, big wow. beer drinkers. But we have noticed when we do appreciate the beer. It, it's this. It's this. It's got the dark, rich, multi chocolatey, nutty I think a lot of that flavors. comes from the fact that I'm a bourbon guy. I really like bourbon. I actually yeah. prefer bourbon to scotch. I do appreciate scotch and Irish whiskeys, but I actually really like bourbon and Canadian. But anyway, those things have those richer flavors, the deeper, uh, to me anyway. And they're, they're a certain kind of multi flavor. This embodies that. I mean, this is, this is actually damn amazing. I don't care that it didn't get to the higher ABV and all that. But legally, it's 9.3. So. Legally, it's above the limit in the U.S. to be called a beer, so it's a barley wine. But wow, it tastes so uh, rich. Is the first word that comes to mind. Uh, velvety. It, it it has that really nice mouthfeel. It is sweeter than than yeah. you would think. Yeah. I think the extra sweetness, because remember this didn't go fully fully low. We think it's non fermentable sugars because yeah. of extra barley. Right. And that balanced out the extra hops. We talked about a lot of the darker um, grains because of the way they're roasted. Those sugars then become unfermentable due to the roasting process. And that creates this lovely color. But I think it also gave it this lovely sweetness. I love I oh, love this. And yeah. I, I would this have never is, said. This is really incredible. I love beer. I love this beer. I'm at the point where I kind of <laughs> wish that we made five gallons of this and one gallon of the Dunkelweizen. Yeah. Just saying. The Dunkle is okay. Not my favorite, though. It, it's got a... There's a flavor in there that I just don't like. This has just the right bitterness to cut the sweetness, but it has... Man, it's it's so hard to describe. There is such a... It's complex. Yeah. There's so much going on. Even the finish of it doesn't just go away. It's got a nice, long finish to it, so it like stays with you. You get to experience it a little bit more. I don't know if it's...
it's just the carbonation or the ingredients, but like you said, it's it's got a creamy yes mouthfeel. Um, like a lot of Irish stouts, um, uh, oatmeal stouts, things like that, or milk stouts, they have that lactose creaminess. This almost is there. It's not quite the same. Yeah. It's still got almost a coffee bitterness kind of thing. Yeah. But it's more like a coffee bitterness, not a true hops bitterness. Yeah. And I, I really think that, wow, it just balanced out beautifully. Almost by accident. I hate to even say that, <laughs> but it kind of did. I mean, I planned out the brew and everything like that, but I expected it to go a little higher, which means it wouldn't be as sweet. Yeah. And so it was funny accidents. because we were actually talking about this today and how we wanted to revisit barley wine. And that was before doing this tasting. And, now and I wanted this... to make a barley wine and taste it just like this. And now that we've done this tasting, we're like, oh boy. I mean, seriously, I was, we were saying, I'm like, I want to make a barley wine. I want to do less hops and have it be sweeter. And, and I realized once we started tasting, I'm like, this is exactly what I wanted to make. <laughs> so just repeat my recipe and it'll work out, <laughs> it'll work out perfectly. <laughs> seriously, guys, this is so good. And I, I know we're probably sounding like a couple of stupid kids or whatever, but this is really good. And when we make something that's a little unexpected but comes out great, it makes me happy. I mean, yes. this is a fun hobby, and that's we, part we of what's excited. fun about this hobby. I'll probably keep a few bottles. As, as, uh, I'll probably keep... By the way, did I mention it's over 9% ABV? <laughs> I'll probably keep a few bottles of this around for a while so that we can compare it to other things that we make. It's just that good. Then again, I might just drink them because it's just that good. Now it's time to talk about pairings. And I am in an instant of regret, regret right now. Because last night, Brian made possibly the most incredible cheeseburgers that I have had my entire life. I wish we had this with them. And if we drank this, this with it, perfection, hello. Now I actually changed my burger recipe. Not the burger itself, Again. but the buns. Again. So, yes. Simpler recipe, but that's another show. We're talking about beer. <laughs> what else would you pair this with? I think a nice steak. Would, yeah, this would, would go be... with red meat. We say that a lot, but red meat is pretty uh, ubiquitous. It can go with a lot of things. This would enhance the richness of that steak without taking away from it. I think um, it would be nice with fried foods. Yeah, anything fried. That extra little bit of bitterness in the sweet would cut through the fried. Yep. Um, I normally would say I like beer with pizza, but in this case, this is too much for pizza. Yeah, this is way too complex for pizza. Because the cheese and the sauce and, you know, the the flavors going on there would compete with this and way as, too much. As you ha have probably noticed, if you watch our cooking show, CS Cooks and Grows, Brian is a bit of a pizza snob. Pizza, hot dogs, and burgers. Gourmet food. And if you don't <laughs> like it, watch our show. I will change your mind. So when he's created his masterpiece of pizza, he doesn't want something as lovely as, as this beer is to compete with it. Yeah. So. But keep in mind, I also make my own pasta from scratch and make all kinds of like hoity type stuff. Too, right. So. Right. Well, and I didn't want people thinking that that's all I made. As much <laughs> as you have elevated the burger as well, I think the flavor profiles in the burger would pair lovely with this and not yeah. compete because there's not so much the sweetness in the burger where you do add a bit of sweetness to right. many of your pizzas. I'm trying to figure out what else this would go with. Um, hmm. It's chili. My Viking your chili. Viking chili, yeah. Which we have a video on that. We do. My Viking chili would go nicely with this. It's a little spicy. Um, this would pair well with And the sweetness and this But they're both very strong temper. flavors, yeah. so they won't compete. Yeah. They'll, it'll be like, beer, chili, beer, <laughs> chili. It'll be, it'd be awesome. Now I'm going to make chili. Uh, we just had chili. That's good, though. I could eat chili all the time. You can never have too much chili. All right. Chili is the other one. Chili we're, would be my fourth We're going to babble on about this. Anyway, this was awesome. We are so happy that our... Barley wine experiment was way successful. Make this beer! And uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.